Yeah, we're going to do a little video. We're going to address a few things that uh, have come up here over the course of making these videos over the last couple weeks. Uh, mainly talking about working young horses, when you should, when you shouldn't, what's physically appropriate, what's mentally appropriate for their capacity, uh, that type of thing. Um, but before we do, I want to thank everybody. Gosh, we're, uh, we have a lot of views on the channel that uh, we've been putting up material for two and a half weeks or so. And uh, we also uh, have almost a thousand subscribers. Hopefully by morning we will have a thousand subscribers and I appreciate all that. Uh, I want to thank every one of you that said kind words and uh, gave us encouragement. And I particularly want to thank uh, Jim Gordon, Working Horses with Jim. Uh, Jim mentioned me in one of his videos, and holy cow, what an impact that made. I started having people come to my channel. So I uh, appreciate you, Jim. Appreciate you reaching out to us and, uh, and the nice words. Uh, Jim's the real deal. I encourage everybody to watch him. Uh, you know, I could tell by watching him what a horseman and what a logger and farmer, what kind of guy he is and what a good way he has about teaching. Um, so we're going to brush off and harness this guy while we're talking we got a harness for one reason and brush for the same reason if you look behind us we're stuck the finger lakes forest products mobile is stuck <laughs> in the mud that's what we're dealing with it's uh february 1st i don't know what we were down to punxsutawney here yesterday or two days ago but i don't know what old phil said but we got mud around here Normally it's zero and below around here this time of year. Today I'm I'm in a one long sleeve shirt. Uh, and Zodiac is mud from head to tail because he went out and had a good time rolling. Uh, next group of people I want to thank are all the people that uh, commented and and uh, disagreed with me, but commented or questioned me or whatever you want to say about uh, working a. A coming three-year-old here, a two-year-old horse. He'll be three June 3rd. Uh, I appreciate good criticism anyway, uh, even if it's contrary. We learn a lot. You know, we listen to you guys, and uh, and that's where we learn things. And, um, you know, sometimes you see things I don't, and I appreciate you telling me and, and reaching out. And uh, But the biggest thing I appreciate, you all did it in a, in a respectable, nice civil manner that I can get behind, you know. You might not have agreed with me, but you uh, you did it in a great manner, and it wasn't rude. Uh, some of my chainsaw work, you know, especially the, the stuff I, I talk about with safety, you get these macho guys that, ah, that ain't the way to do it, and go right into filthy talking Andrew Dice Clay kind of insults, and, uh, you know, tell me I'm the biggest idiot ever, and... Uh, you can say the same thing without being like that. And by the way, those people, I can tell they're not loggers. You know, loggers, to begin with, loggers are pretty busy trying to make a living. They're not sitting in front of YouTube a lot. But the loggers aren't that type of critical. You know, if I do it different than them, they're, they're loggers are going to say something like, well, that's not how I do it, but I can see where that works for you or something like that, you know. Uh, it's your keyboard warriors. Your, uh, your keyboard loggers. I'm going to insert a picture of a keyboard logger right here. Uh, those are the ones who, who have the big, terrible mouths on them. Um, you know, a real logger might even disagree and uh, uh, disagree just like you horse folks did in a civil manner and, uh, and call me out, but call me out in a good way. Um, anyway, I uh, want to thank you all for being uh, sensible and uh, in a, just a good audience. Uh, you know, I could I could tell you you guys are the kind of people I'd like to hang with. And if we see each other at horse progress days or a horse pull or a plow and match or uh, anything at an auction, whatever you might see us, let's hang out. But uh, uh, let's uh, let's get into the heart of this. What's uh, Hunter S. Thompson say? Let's get right to the heart of this. <laughs> Let's get down to brass tacks. How much for the eight? So, uh, young horses. That's a hot topic. It hits emotion. And working young horses gets emotional with people. And I get it. Um, you know, I, uh, I got strong feelings about it myself. But, uh, 
Let, let's cover some facts. The first fact is there's a lot of misinformation out there. And not much of it is coming from professionals, from universities and vets and, and peer-reviewed studies, or even good anecdotal stuff. Like I've got an eight-year-old that's, you know, lame on a big hock or bad tendons on the back because I worked it too hard as a two-year-old. It's coming from people who are making, you know, Facebook pictures and, and graphs and stuff that they show things, but it, it's not science. It's It didn't come out of Cornell University or... or University of Kentucky or five vets that got together. Um, you know, it came from somebody who who's handy with diagram and some, some computer stuff quite often. Uh, any science I've read to the point where it, it breaks my own heart. I hate to see those racehorses running that young. But <coughs> any science I've read says that uh, shows that you're not injuring the horse. Uh, those horses have a lot of injuries, but it's not because of, uh, uh, it's, it's not because of getting a young start. You know, just, just think of this in terms of ourselves. People, you know, most of us played youth sports. Most of us worked hard as a youngster. Uh, you know, I was 10 years old on a, yeah, I, I normally is where I, I hit end when I'm, uh, watching a video and somebody says, you know, well, it doesn't hurt me to kick my kid's ass. I got my kid, my ass kicked when I was a kid. Here, I'm kind of saying the same thing, but I was 10 years old. I was on a flat wagon behind a hay baler, square hay baler, stacking hay all by myself. Uh, you know, my dad ran the tractor. Uh, he had bad knees. He was older at the time. He couldn't do it. Uh, so, you know, there's pictures of me when I was... 12 years old, logging, and not some token, hey, look at the kid. I mean, logging, like expected to get some timber out or, you know, because we had no log truck coming later that day that we had to fill. Um, and it made me bigger and stronger, but there was a damn good balance between it. I could be a goofball. I could wear a, a fireman's helmet and play the banjo. And, you know, I, I could... Uh, I could be a shithead, I could ride sheep, I, I could play sports, I could have fun. It wasn't work from daylight till dawn. Physically, that probably wouldn't have hurt me any. Probably made me stronger than I am. But uh, it's not a good balance, you know? <laughs> you want a good balance in life. Who was the quarterback? Oh, I think he was an Oklahoma guy. They called him Robo QB. You know, you'd think I'd have had this ready. Uh, Went into the NFL, played for the Raiders. Absolute bust. Uh, best thing they ever saw in high school. And uh, I think he got drafted the same year Peyton Manning did. Uh, got drafted that year. Um, best thing ever through high school and, and uh, college. And, uh, you know, his folks raised him to be quarterback. Kind of like Tiger Woods' dad raised him to be the best ba uh, golfer ever. He didn't have a life. You know, he wasn't allowed to eat certain foods. He wasn't allowed to hang out with buddies or go to the movies. Josh Hamilton, as a baseball player, was that way. Uh, lived for baseball. You know, his parents moved towns so he could play high school and travel baseball better. Uh, look what happened to Josh Hamilton. He had a 10-year a spell of hard drug addiction that, that just ruined him physically, and he made an amazing comeback and became the Josh Hamilton we love. But that's what happens when there's a lack of balance. That's what happens with people who have a lack of balance. They rebel. That Robo QB, you know, once he got out on his own and had a little freedom, he went bananas. And he didn't, he, he was burned out at that point. And he didn't focus on uh, being a quarterback. What the hell's his name? Huh? Somebody's going to write it in the comments and think of it. Uh, anyway. Same with these horses. I'm not gonna work this guy from daylight till dawn. You know, just work him into the ground and expect him to work like a five-year-old. I'm not gonna hook him to loads that are that he's incapable of. Uh, you know, more than he can handle. Uh, or even if he can handle them, more than he can mentally handle. 
Uh, let me give you a good example of, of the mental development and how far behind the physical development it is. When I was 14, I used to be a distance runner. I used to run cross country. And uh, my coach, who was 42 years old at the time, he's still running today all these years later. Anyway, come up running behind me and practice one time. And uh, came up running behind me. And he uh, um, passed me. He caught up to me and passed me. And, and he started talking in just conversational tone as we're running. He says, I've got you beat. He says, when I pass a teenager like you, a guy your age, he says, you just kind of give up once I get a couple steps past you. You fight me for five, ten feet. Once I get past you, I've got you beat, and I'm going to stay ahead of you the rest of the race. He says, I pass a 25 or a 30-year-old. He says, they're not going to let it happen. He says, you're physically capable. You know, it's in you. You're man enough. You're bigger than me. Longer legs. Younger, everything. You're physically capable of beating me today. But you're not going to because that's how teenagers work. That's the stage this horse is in, you know. Um, he's not a 25-year-old. And, and when he's presented with something he doesn't want to pull, you know, that he really has to give it full effort or overworked, he's going to give up on it. Fully, fully agree with anybody who will argue that point. Uh you know, I, I had somebody who uh, I know was a darn good logger commented something about um, pushing a two-year-old pretty hard. And he was talking about physically, or I mean mentally, not physically. I'm going to listen to that point of view. Um, now, I think it looked more impressive on film what I'm doing than what I'm actually doing. Uh, you know, it looked like big trees, but we're going downhill with them. You know, it wasn't near as bad as it looked. So let me make a couple points about that. Uh, the first point, I'm going to insert a picture of my eveners here. Uh, just mainly because I don't feel like taking them in. Uh, you are such a dork. The first point, my eveners are 40 inches Here's wide. Here's our eveners. Here's Zodiac so right here. side, all the way out. 40 he inches. Is just, and it might be, if we look, give or take, these are easy numbers. He's 23 inches. inches from center. Zodiac. We're going to hook He's him ugly on the Jim's side. All the, the way side, in. Because that's what you do with And uh, Jim is. You put your smaller horse over there. Just we about 21 inches side. from center. We set, so, uh, no, we give two inches. Zodiac two inches. Jim is set in advantage. two inches. Jim, who we often And that's how we with. compensate for a young two horse. And one of the ways the we center. don't. This is the center. Right over push here. a young horse. Jim is two inches closer. That's 10%. On, on 20 inches, that's 10%. That means Zodiac's doing 10% less work than the full-grown, fully physically and mentally mature horse. Uh, for easy numbers, if we're hooking to 10,000 pounds, which we do here and there, not in the woods, but had a horse pull, and not with a horse this age, but uh, if you have a horse set in two inches, 10%, you have one horse, you know, just say it was Zodiac and Jim. Not that I plan on doing that anytime soon. But say we hooked to 10,000 pounds, Zodiac's pulling 4,500 pounds of that weight. Jim is pulling 5,500. Uh, that's what you do with the eveners. You, you change to adapt for a size, strength, and maturity difference. Um, if anybody wants to check that math and tell me I'm wrong, I'm not going to argue. I... You know, I spent a lot of my days, as I said, working and playing sports and having a good time and not doing so good in math, not doing so well in math class. So if those numbers aren't right, but they, they're in the friggin' ballpark, I guarantee you that. Um, hey, don't make me stop this car. Um, I tell you what, I'm noticing that I, I think I'm abusing this horse worse than uh, than working him. Those damn toes are long. We have a resetting appointment coming right up. Whew. We need to get that toe back an inch or so. Now that's going to damage. His back feet aren't too bad, and that's where the power comes from is the back. But that's going to damage uh, tendons and, and growth and stuff more than anything, having a long toe and a 
and a long breakover point. That's that's not how a horse should be made. Uh, we'll get there, you know. Next trip down, we'll uh, next time Andy shows up to reset him, we'll we'll get him there, and that's coming right up. So on the physical, it's it's doing a horse good, you know. Look at youth sports. You know, it's good. I mean, take concussions out of it. I'm not hitting this horse in the head. Nick, you're going to have to get up and move. Nick uh, didn't work hard enough when he was young, and he doesn't have the strength that we do, so he's he's got to sit in film. What do you think of me picking on you on film? <laughs> I'm picking on Nick. Nick's worked ever since he was a little kid. Uh, I just pick on him sometimes. I don't know what I'd do without him. Come here, Nick. Oh. Hey, love you. Uh, anyway, that is a good point, though. You know, any of us that grew up on a farm or working, physically working, it's, it's absolutely amazing when we get into maybe high school or, or young in the workforce, how much more ready we are physically than the kids that, that never did. You know, there, there's a big difference. You know, Keith Jackson, ABC Sports. Keith used to talk about it that uh, there's a big difference between weight room tough and uh, farm tough. You know, Mike Golick, Mike and Mike in the morning there on ESPN, uh, him and his brother both played pro football. They were linemen. Mike Golick used to, his dad used to tell him, you can't take the bench press out on the field with you. And there, there is a difference between working tough and uh, weight room tough. I know I talk about athletes a lot, but that's what we're raising as athletes, you know. Even if we're just going to do some farm work, some plowing and stuff, we're raising athletes, you know. And, and I'm going to take that to a next level and have performance athletes. So, studies indicate, and I have talked to five veterinaries this week, three of whom actually keep and raise and compete with draft horses. Draft horses, specifically Belgians like these. <laughs> I wish they were like these. Belgians anyway. But anyway, um, and they all agreed that they're not treating injuries because people work a horse too young. What you're doing is you're kind of setting the tone. Studies show you're setting the tone. You're, you're developing better ligaments, stronger ligaments, stronger bones, bigger muscles. You're developing that for later in life. You're kind of showing them the job they're going to do. I know that sounds simplistic, but let's refer to uh, a podcast that I love. And uh, it's, it's called Straight from the Horse Doctor's Mouth, Spring Hill Equine Center. It's uh, Dr. Erica Latcher. And her highly entertaining and, and really nice, personable man, her husband, Justin Long. And uh, let's refer to a podcast episode they had, and I'll try to be smart enough to put this in the link. It's called um, The Young Horse Myth. And they refer to different uh, studies done that show exactly what I'm talking about. Um, not just anecdotal stuff. But, but actual studies with large amounts of horses showing uh, injuries and lack of them in preparation. Uh, they also have a blog put out by Tony, their vet clinic cat, and it's on the same subject. I'll try to put a link to that also. But I highly, they also have a YouTube channel too. But I highly recommend, um, I highly recommend that podcast uh, on a lot of different things. Uh, as far as I remember, they don't talk about draft horses, or they haven't yet. There's an idea for you if you're listening, Justin Long. Um, but anyway, if uh, but everything they talk about is applicable. It, it's across the board, whether it's feed and how it starts with hay, whether it's turnout. Um, great podcast, and it, it a applies to our draft horses. Um, and they relate youth sports and how that develops. <laughs> A young horse. Oh. So we, uh, we're kind of beating that into the ground about the physical aspect. You know, it's not real important when the growth plate closes. You're right, it doesn't close. You're right, the ligaments aren't fully 
developed and made and the muscles aren't fully developed and they're not fully done growing for a long time. That doesn't mean they can't be worked and worked sensibly. And it doesn't mean you're going to injure this horse by working him. Now, here's where we're all in agreement. <coughs> the mental capacity. And I'm just like you. I'm going to go down to Mount Hope Auction this fall or spring here in a couple weeks. And I'm going to see a whole bunch of what they call well-broke two-year-olds. And two-year-olds have been working hard all spring and winter and last fall. And they're only two. And I'm going to cringe, just like you folks do when you see me working this horse. When you are working them hard and pushing them and the calves are thin and everything else. Which, truth is, thin is maybe even better than fat for a young horse. But you're pushing them beyond their mental capacity. You're not doing the horse any favors. Um, again, let's go back to that, uh, let, let's go back to that, uh, example I gave of, uh, of me as a 14 year old athlete, my coach passing me and me giving up. Uh, I'll tell you this for a fact. I, him and I stayed friends and ran in road races after school. If you can imagine that with me today, but I was in my, uh, early twenties running with him. Get over dork. And, uh. And uh, it was the opposite, you know. It wasn't so much Coach Waggle. We were usually in different divisions. But uh, another athlete, another runner would come up behind me, and I could hold on till the end of the race. I had the mental capacity developed as a man in my early 20s that I didn't have as a 14-year-old. Um, and, and there's where these horses are, you know. I've even competed in horse bulls with two-year-olds. So I'm going to insert a picture right here of big old Libby competing and winning, I love to say that, as a uh, three-year-old uh, down to Climber. A lot of teams in the pole that day. And there was a big team there that hadn't been beaten in years. And uh, we went in there and handed it to them with a three-year-old. Uh, Libby was exceptional. She was precocious. She, her mind was right from day one. She, she was just different. Uh, Mentally. Uh, now, that was three years old. That's 21 years ago. Libby's either 24 or 5. We lose track. But uh, there's a picture of Nick, our cameraman. Nick driving her last year at a horse pull. And we were fourth out of eight or nine. And uh, just a foot away, literally one foot away from being uh, uh, third. And uh, we won the best appearing team that day. Uh, in fact, right here is... Uh, the trophy you won, isn't it, Nick? This nice pair of red alders. Best I believe so. Team. Could have been that or this, right? Nope, that was another pull. That's a humble brag there, but we won that for a best teamster at another pull. <laughs> and that was another pull, yeah. Yeah, let's keep on bragging. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll compete with a horse to what they're capable of. I might even take this young dude out next year to a couple horse pulls. Uh, we have some farm horse pulls around here. We start with next to nothing. I mean, just about an empty sled. We will start with an empty sled if somebody wanted. And we go up a small increment, half as much as we do during the regular horse pulls. And, uh, and you quit any time and... Uh, a lot of people get a young horse started there, a true farm horse that's never been on a heavy load. We get them started there at these farm poles. And I might take him out a couple times. Uh, but he's going to pull what he's capable of, and it's going to be fairly easy. We're not going to tax him very much. And then we're going to tie up to the trailer and call it a day. Uh, until he's five, maybe even six is even better, I'm not going to go out there and ask all he can do. I'm going to insert a video right here of my team, my regular pulling team last year. This was really the first time that uh, I asked this team to do all they're capable of and get down and pull and, uh, and, and really get on. Holy cow. This team pulling six and 11 years old in this case. Um, that's the ugly Jim and Elvis. Labor Day last year. Uh, Elvis was actually five. He turned six uh, later that well, month. Um, Going to insert that right there and show that. 
Elvis started as a young boy, I think a three-year-old with him. And uh, it's a damn easy one. Went to some bowls, quit early, didn't do much. Did a little more as a four-year-old. But then he was hooked with Ugly Jim. <laughs> Counterfeit is a $3 bill back then, but we got him over it. And uh, Anyway, Elvis is uh, coming six-year-old year here. We asked something out of him. And Jim. Even as a mature horse, took two years before I could ask something out of him because he was so damn counterfeit. And he just had to slowly, like you would a young horse, start hooking to loads he could handle and he knew he could handle and bring him around slow because he had to believe in me. He had to believe that I'm not going to put him in a bad spot. And that's what we're doing with these young horses. They have to believe in you, the teamster, that you're not going to put them in a bad spot. You're not going to hook them to more than they can handle. Good horses will... Good horses will uh, believe that they can pull anything you hook them to. You know, good oxen are the same way. And that's another point. We'll show this right here. Association of New England Ox Teamsters. <laughs> I'm an ox man. I don't have any right now, but uh, love to keep a good team of oxen. I love to pull them when I can. Uh, we start oxen young. Like, I mean, really young. We start working them young. Hell, they start pulling them young. Like, Ton class, and maybe even 1,600 pound class of so those 4-H classes up there. Um, I've never seen an ox suffer from that. I've never seen an ox that uh, had issues because he was worked too young, particularly mentally. You know, it's really good for him. The ones you start older are the ones that are harder to really get well broke in oxen. But nobody ever gets emotional about that. Nobody ever tells me, good Lord, Grant, you shouldn't be logging with a two-year-old team of oxen. I'm going to insert a picture right here of a two-year-old team of oxen. And, uh, oh, this is 2004, this picture I'm putting up, uh, somewhere near a 20-year-old mare, the black mare, and a 11, and, and, and an 11 year old mare, who I just broke that year, uh, by the way, what horse broke down? It was the one that never did anything until she was 11. Nothing. Uh, you know, just was a pasture pet until she was 11. She broke down. She, uh, she didn't hang around. The, the one that we, the home raised one, we started working her as a two year old in those pictures. So maybe I'll put it right here also of me, uh, skidding logs when I'm young. Jill was three in that picture, and the stud was two, and I was 12, as I've said, and uh, we're skidding logs. She was working until she was uh, 26. She died at 27, perfectly healthy. The only horse I've ever heard of who won a horse show in a halter class, and I think there were nine other entries that day in the mare class. She won a horse show and a horse pull in her 20s. I think she was 24 and 23 when she did that. So, I don't think we hurt old Jill too much. But, now let's talk about my version of doing it right when you're working horses. Uh, and, and oxen too, as far as that goes. Oxen are even more important. I know this isn't about oxen, but oxen have the yoke and you have to develop that pad on top of the neck where the yoke sits and it'll get hard. People who have had oxen for years but really have never worked a team are amazed at how hard that callus gets on top of their neck. Uh, we don't have to worry about that with horses. We fit our harnesses good. We don't have to build a callus. But what we do have to build is muscles, tendons, strength, burn the fat off them, wind, you know, lung capacity, endurance. We have to build all that stuff in our horses. And the way we do that is slowly, just like everything with horses. I always say, everything with horses happens slowly. The only thing they do overnight is die. Everything else takes a lot of time. Uh, this guy I'm harnessing here, for instance, 
I started him last April. And that's earlier than I'm normally going to start a horse. And I had no reason to start him. You know, I had a barn full of horses. I'm working for other people and for myself. Uh, but I started him last April because he is an absolute piss pot. He's always into something. He's just curious. He's, he's Maybe he's too smart for his own good. But right here, I'm going to insert a video of him on his when he was three months old. And that's how he was. And... Um, you know, photograph of him, and that's her title photo is, is him. What are you doing, little man? And if I would have waited man? until this dude was a four-year-old. Sure, I was spunky. Instead of a three-year-old, or a two-year-old, <laughs> year whatever he was, he would have been a hand. Can't scan you there. So last April, when the snow came off, I started working Zodiac. No, I didn't, but I started working with Zodiac. Started bitten rigging him. My version of bitten rig. And Zodiac is a slow learner. Right. It took uh, it took me a month of bitten rigging what it, to really get him to the stage it normally takes a horse to do a week of bitten rigging. After that, I line drove him single. And then I drove him double with a teammate and we were hooked to next to nothing and man did he try to get in trouble. Remember that day you had to come out back? I called you on the cell phone. He tried to jump over the top of Libby. And yep. Holy cow, we came an inch from having to run away. We haven't had a run away with him yet, but we were an inch from it. And that was well into his training. We didn't just harness him and go. Uh, it was well into his training that day. But uh, He did not run away, and Nick came out and helped me, and, uh, and we got straightened out. And we worked him on an empty sled, not doing much. We worked him like that for a good while. Developing some muscle, some wind. Letting him learn to stand decent. <laughs> then uh, we had a nice log job and we had the capability, the ability rather, to uh, start um, putting all the small logs aside. And the easy skidding, the downhill stuff. And, and we did that all week long. And then on Friday, we'd take this guy to the woods with old Libby. And we'd, uh, we'd skid those logs uh, on Friday with him and give him an easy day. And But it was a day's work. And it was a trip in the trailer. And it was going somewhere. And it's, it's getting his head right is what we were doing. And then, um, I don't know, did we do any plowing with this guy last fall? I don't remember. I think I so. Yeah, did we? Maybe we did, but it was minimal, you know? Yeah. But we were steady at hooking him three, four days a week, mostly on the exercise sled. And then uh, we had a pretty favorable log job uh, around Thanksgiving. So from April to Thanksgiving, he got work and, and fairly steady and very lightly. And uh, once Thanksgiving came, or just about Thanksgiving, we put him to work at a different level, logging. And... Um, you know, still, we took it kind of easy with him, um, but we didn't have to sort him as much, and he could skid a bigger log. And his his uh, development came around so quickly, physically as well as, as mentally, once he actually started working. And uh, from November till now, and, and as we speak, it's February 1st, Groundhog Day, uh, he came around really nicely. And uh, he, uh, uh, he's really developed into a good horse, and I trust him to pull a little bit bigger hitches, but I'm still careful with him. Um, you know, I'm also careful with myself. I will call him a colt until he's five, six years old. I called Elvis a colt half a year last year. I do a lot of announcing the horse pulls, and Nick does the driving. And... Uh, you know, I'd be announcing, and I'd announce him like, Nick, bring that colt in here. You know, he's coming six years old, but I'm still calling him a colt. That's for my benefit. So I something in the back of my head says, if I'm calling him a colt, I'm not going to push him too fast, mentally. We're going to come around here. We're going to show, uh, oh, boy, I'm ashamed. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't, but we're going to show Zodiacs. Little brother. Ooh, pardon. He 
he is a year to the day younger, and he's a full brother. And he is nearly the same size as Zodiac, ak, ak, ak. Well, you ought to know by now. He's a big boy for a yearling. You know, for, for my stock, I'm sure if you're used to 1,900 pound hitch bred horses, maybe he's not a big yearling, but for my stock he is. He's probably gonna outgrow my lightweight class. He's probably gonna be well over a ton. Um, he's also sensible. I mean, you, you see it in his head. <clears throat> Just sensible. I have no intention of starting this guy at the full year younger till almost a year from today. Um, because he, he's mentally, he's, he's not going to need a lot to get him around. Um, now, I turn him out for a lot of exercise. About a year from today, I'll start working him, and he'll be capable of a little bit more. And uh, um, we'll be... Uh, We'll be quite a ways ahead with him. We'll just go start developing him, him physically and mentally. But I'm not in as big a hurry because, one, he's he's bigger. Uh, that's one reason I hooked this guy young. He's little. And the difference between a 1,700-pound horse that's six years old and a 1,950-pound horse starts at about $4,000. And if anybody knows me, they know damn well that a good day for me at a horse pull means coming home with an empty trailer and uh, selling a horse. If, if the difference in size is that much, it, just, it does. It starts at about $4,000 different. Then, uh, then I'm going to do what I can to make him grow. And I can't feed Zodiac the protein I feed him, the rocket fuel hay, the, uh, the high protein grain. I can't feed him like I'd like to to get him to grow if he's not working. Again, I don't have to worry about that with Ziggy. So. Yeah, a few points. Uh, love to hear everybody's uh, love to hear everybody's ideas back and, and your comments and uh, you know whether you agree or disagree. Uh, tell me what you think. Uh, um, yeah, again, I appreciate everybody watching. I appreciate everybody's opinions. Uh, uh, I think here at the end, I'm going to insert a few pictures. We got a handful of horses. Old Doc and Jill was, was a team I had growing up. Or, well, my dad and I together. It was a stud and a mare. Started working as two- and three-year-olds. They both worked well into their 20s. Uh, we've got uh, Corky and Libby. Libby's right over here. Started working as a two-year-old, two, two and three, I can't remember. Both of them we started as two-year-olds. And uh, Libby's 24, and I plan on getting her out and doing a little pulling this year with her for a little bit of fun. Um, Corky's her full brother. Started him as a two-year-old. He's in some of these pictures. He, uh, last I saw, he was in his 20s, and he was working on an Amish farm, skidding logs. And their log arch actually had skis on it, sled runners. I never saw that before. Um, last I knew, that boy was still working in his 20s. Started as a two-year-old. Um, so, you know, anecdotally, I can tell you from, from experience that I've never heard a horse be, from uh, starting them physically, starting them working too young. Now I'm going to put a picture of a team in here, Rambo and Fozzie. And uh, Rambo is a tremendous pulling horse. Uh, great horse. Beautiful horse. If he was around today, boy, would he team up with Elvis. I'd have the fanciest horses you ever saw. And, uh, and a damn good pulling team. Uh, his brother Fozzie, I started as a two-year-old. Physically, didn't hurt the boy at all. Mentally, I pushed him a little too hard. I, uh, I wanted to win. I wanted to beat some of those boys I shouldn't. And uh, they didn't offer farm classes back then. And and Fozzie was not the pulling horse Rambo was. Uh, I mean, they were good. They were better than most. Uh, but to go in there and compete at a good level at a pole, they weren't ready for that. Um, well, Rambo was, but Fozzie wasn't. And I just exposed him, hooked him too heavy too many times, too young. So it can happen, you know. Uh, so that that's how I know. I've, I've made the mistakes. But. Anyway, I appreciate all the time from everybody and uh, appreciate all the support and uh, 
Look forward to interacting with everybody. Thank you.